Hey, praise the Lord and greetings to you once again in Jesus' name. This is Brother Clinton. Uh, welcome to my office once again. It's the third day of the week, the 14th of March, the year of our Lord, 2017, 5777. A young brother just now wrote to me in, in a YouTube comment, actually, and asked me about Acts 16.31. And I believe that this brother understands the scripture in that particular case, but he asked me, if I have a video on this channel about that, explaining about it, because there's so many people that misunderstand it. And I don't know, actually, if I have a video on this channel at this point on that subject. And so in a few minutes, I will have when this video is uploaded. Uh, an interesting thing happened, brother, when you left that comment. I approved it, and then it disappeared. And that's not definitely not the first time that this has happened uh, on YouTube, which is why I always say the best way to contact me if you have a question or a comment is via email and my email address is always below in the information box. Um, YouTube comments and especially private messaging is really unreliable and if you've sent me a message or made a comment and have not received an answer or it hasn't been approved um, and of course if there was no profanity or foul language or abusive language or anything like that in it uh, it's probably because I never saw it or because I approved it and just never showed up. So just to let you know, it's not me ignoring you. It's YouTube uh, messing up our communication. And so having said that, let's go to the scripture. May God bless the reading of his word. Um, let's go to Acts in the 16th chapter. Now, for those of you who are young in, in the faith and you don't really understand the whole of the Bible yet, the New Testament is basically divided into four different sections. The books of the New Testament are put where they are on purpose. On purpose. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the first four books of the New Testament, and they tell us the story of everything that happened between the time that Jesus Christ was born and the time that he ascended into heaven. This was during the period of the Old Testament, when Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews, came to minister to the Jewish people, and it was after the Jewish people rejected him and turned him over to the Romans to be crucified, and he was killed and buried and raised from the dead on the third day. Then 50 days after his resurrection, the New Testament began on the day of Pentecost. And we can read about that in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. This is the fifth book of the New Testament. And it t picks up where Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John leave off at the ascension of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, into heaven, and continues as a historical account of what happened when the apostles of Jesus Christ preached his gospel after his resurrection and people became Christians and churches were formed and then the apostles went forth to various places and wrote letters back to the churches which are the letters that we have in the New Testament from Romans all the way to Jude okay that's the third part of the New Testament and then of course we have the revelation which is prophecy so there's four parts to the New Testament the four Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John the book of Acts the epistles from Romans to Jude and the Revelation. Okay, So just so you understand that, just a basic kind of rundown of the New Testament. Now in the book of Acts, the we have an, a, a historical account of the apostles of Jesus Christ preaching the gospel after his resurrection and, and showing, well, let me just back up a little bit. The, the apostles of Jesus Christ preached the gospel in the book of Acts, and we can see by reading the book of Acts how they preached the gospel to people, how people became Christians, and how churches were formed. Okay, so in the book of Acts in the 16th chapter, it came to pass that Paul and Silas had been persecuted and thrown into prison because of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it was in a city called Philippi. Okay, now when they were in prison, in, in, uh, and they were cast into the lowest part of the prison, their feet were put in the stocks after they had been beaten, um, and publicly, for not having committed any crime, just for preaching the word of God. Um, they, it, it, the Bible says that at midnight they were praying and praising the Lord, and because they were praying and praising the Lord, the Lord caused the earth to shake under the jail, and it shook so hard that all the prisoners' chains fell off and the doors flew open, and all the prisoners were free. And the jailer, uh, the, one, the man who was in charge of keeping the prisoners, saw that this happened, and that all the prisoners were, you know, free. And he was just about to take a sword and kill himself because, of course, he, he would have been put to death by his employers, by his higher-ups, for having lost all the prisoners. So he was going to kill himself. And Paul and Silas said, no, 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 don't do it. And they began to speak to him. And, and as we continue from the story that I'm just telling you, you can, I encourage you to read Acts 16, but that's what happened. 
And then so let's continue from verse 27. It says, And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Okay, now this is a very important question. And this is a question that people will ask you if you're a Christian. And it's very important that you have the correct answer because that's what a priesthood is for. And so in verse 31, the Bible says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Okay, now that's wonderful. But that's not the end of the story. And that's where people end because they don't know the scripture, because they've never searched the scriptures. They go to their particular organization that they call a church, and they believe that they're saved even though they have never obeyed the gospel of Christ. They believe because their pastors have told them, their pastors who graduated from seminaries have told them that there's nothing that you can do to be saved, that all you have to do, as if it was something to do, when they say you can't do anything, is just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, They say just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved. Okay, Well, that's not what the scripture says. Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Well, okay, Paul was telling the truth, but he, he didn't say, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're already saved and your whole house is automatically saved too. He didn't say that. In fact, if we continue reading just a few more verses, we'll see the whole story and the whole thing comes into focus very clearly. It says, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Okay, what's the word of the Lord? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord, Jesus Christ, that the apostles of Jesus Christ got from him in order to preach to the world. That's the word of the Lord. The Lord, Jesus Christ, said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And so they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. This is why he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. You see? So then they went into his house, and they preached to them the word of the Lord. And they believed it and were baptized. All of them. So they were saved. Look, and he took them the same hour of the night, verse 33, and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. You see? So Paul said unto him, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. All right. This doesn't mean if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're already saved. It means just what it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and all thy house. And so he preached, Paul preached the word of the Lord to him and to all his house. And they believed it, and they were baptized straightway. Why were they baptized straightway? Well, because he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Because baptism is for the remission of sins, and it saves us. That's how we're saved. You see, Paul said to Titus in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, According to God's mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. What's the washing of regeneration? It's when you're baptized in Jesus' name and regenerated, because your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. When you're baptized, calling on the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are washed away. Whoa, Brother Clinton, that's not what I've been taught. Well, this is what the Bible says. In the same book of Acts, chapter 22, verse 16, Ananias, who was sent to Paul, when Paul needed to be saved, Ananias, who was sent to Paul, said to him, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts twenty-two sixteen. You see? So I know that there are so many of you out there that have been taught that baptism doesn't save you. And I was taught that too when I was a little baby, born again, and, and, and fighting my way through the de denominations and, and the smoke screens of religiosity to try to get to Jesus. I was taught that too. And I even failed to believe Christians who came to me and told me that for a couple years. Until Jesus finally revealed to me the truth. And, and the truth is plain. It's all over the scripture. See? Baptism is for the remission of sins, and it saves you. And so Acts 16.31 is the truth, and it's the word of God, but it doesn't suggest at all that you can be saved without being baptized in Jesus' name. 
And it doesn't suggest at all that God is promising that everybody in your whole house is going to be saved just because you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But in this particular case, Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Which means, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe the, the, the word of Jesus Christ that I'm about to preach to you, then you can be saved, and anybody in your whole house can be saved. And so we preached the word of the Lord to them, and they believed it, and they were all baptized straightway. Straightway, what does that mean? It means right away. He, they weren't instructed to take a six-week course to learn about baptism and all the denominational garbage that teaches people that baptism is just an outward showing of an inward change and just a public profession of your faith, which is garbage and nonsense. It's, that's not written in the Bible anywhere. What is written in the Bible is that baptism is for the remission of your sins and that it saves you. You see? And Jesus said, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So for those of you who want to quote Acts 16.31 to me, and then and just stop there and then just say, well, he didn't say anything about baptism. Well, you have to finish reading the passage, my friend. You see, it's, it's the middle of a paragraph. It's the middle of a story. See, So you can't just stop at the first sentence and skip the part where Paul preached the word of the Lord to them and baptized them and pretend that doesn't exist. See, well, you can if you want to, but you'll wind up in hell and with the blood of a lot of people on your hands by preaching a false gospel to them. Because Paul said, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And so, my friend, if you're preaching to people that they can be saved from their sins without being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're preaching a false gospel and you are accursed of God. That's not my word and it's not my opinion. It's not my interpretation. I have interpreted nothing. I've just given you the word of God. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, Go ye therefore and, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, whatsoever I have commanded you. He said, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name throughout all nations. He said, Go ye therefore and preach the gospel to every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's so very plain, and it's so frustrating that there are so many people in the churches that proudly and arrogantly proclaim that they are saved when they have never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, and refuse to just open the Bible and read it for themselves. It's really sad. But the Bible says that these were before of old ordained unto this condemnation, and the blackness of darkness is reserved for them forever. So if you have been in that group, and you have believed the lies of a theologian-produced pastor who has told you that baptism has nothing to do with your salvation, and that all you have to do is just believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, and you're all of a sudden a Christian, uh, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and automatically filled with the Holy Spirit, even though you've never spoken in other tongues and prophesied. I adjure you to seek God in his word, to seek him on your knees in prayer right now and to get right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you haven't been baptized in his name, you're not his. And if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that you're none of his. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. And except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name and received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you don't have a covenant with God, my friend, and you're not saved. Now, I'm not here to argue with anybody, but if you have earnest questions, I'm here for you. You're welcome to comment on this video if you like, but as I said, the best way to communicate with me is via email. And I'm here for you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.